Hi again, Bernie Maloney from Powered by Teams with another video in the short videos with tips on job search. This one is going to be about getting in the back door, becoming the identified candidate even before the need appears. This is a really powerful strategy and I hope you've watched the other videos in this series, particularly the one on networking, because that can help you get the uh, access to come in the back door. Now, if you haven't already, do download this PDF at this URL with all the notes of what we're going to be going through in this series. But let's go ahead and step now into coming in the back door and becoming the identified candidate even before the need appears. If you remember back to the orientation interview, I talked about hiring as a 12 hour clock and the need for a position appears somewhere around one o'clock. Okay. The identified candidate happens somewhere around four o'clock and the job gets posted somewhere a little after six. So if you're only applying online, you're kind of behind the power curve. And this technique is going to help you get ahead of that power curve. The way you do that, okay, is a simple technique of creating a premise for discussion by launching a research project. So let's say you're out of work like I was in 2009. Um, research a topic that's important in your field, something that you know is a problem, that maybe you've got some things that you could contribute in that area. Now, what you're doing here is you're flipping the script. Instead of them interviewing you, you, interview, you are interviewing them about this topic. And what you're doing is you're offering to do some free research across a network to surface ideas on this problem that's kind of spread widely and then sharing those ideas. That premise for a conversation can help to get your foot in the door. What it does is it turns you from coming in the front door as a supplicant, please give me the job, or the side door when you get a referral in, hi, the applicant, I'm the applicant, I'm here for the job, you actually become the consultant. Hi, what's your problem? How can I help? Notice the energetic difference that's there. So create an idea of something that you could research while you've got some time on your hands or in job search. Now, you want to have a few scripts as you're doing this because you're going to be calling people. Um, you want to have a voicemail script to begin with. And the whole objective of that is just to get them to return your call. You're kind of going on a fishing expedition here. You can identify people from your network. LinkedIn is a great tool for this. Heck, if there's a job posting, sometimes they'll put the, the title of the hiring manager in that job posting. Go look up the company directory. Look them up in LinkedIn. You can call the switchboard and just ask to be connected to their voicemail. So what you want to be saying in your voicemail is a short introduction of yourself and I've identified you as a thought leader in the field. You want to edify them. And I'd like to see if you'd be open to talking to me about this research project that I'm doing. Okay. Your whole objective in this voicemail is simply to get them to return your call. And now sometimes you may actually catch them live and that's why you need to have another script. You want to be prepared for this. You want to have a script for a live call. And there, your whole objective is to get an appointment to talk to them for, you're going to talk for about 20 minutes. Always ask for less than the full half hour or hour or 45 minutes okay, for doing some of this research interview. This is even easier now because you don't have to show up on premise. You can actually do a video conference through a tool like Zoom for some of these things. So here, the script is not to do the interview. It's to get the appointment for the interview. You're kind of going on a fishing expedition where that first voicemail script is just there with enough bait to get them to like come after you and return your call. And the live call script is there to get them um, to actually return the call when you're talking to them live and agree to make the appointment to sit down and talk to you. Now, this technique of a research project is something that I learned from a recruiter named Dennis Thompson. And he's got a really good reference, and I put that into the reference uh, section of taking charge of your job search. 
And this powerful technique helped me make connections and get known even outside my network when when I was let go from HP and I needed to rebuild a network and get known for other people who could hire me. Okay, so that's two of the three scripts that you're going to need. You're also going to want to have a script for a face-to-face -face conversation. Now, I'm going to cover that next. Remember, the whole idea of the research project is to get to have a conversation with them about a topic of interest. Okay, so when you get face to face with them, you want to have an idea of how you want to structure the interview. Okay, because remember, you're interviewing them, they're not interviewing you. And the topic that you're talking about is a common problem in that field. That common problem, that premise for discussion, is really, really powerful in these situations. See, what you're doing is you're turning the conversation from a faceless, well, hey, I'm reading your resume, to a face full, you're there for the interview, um, to instead of the problem being between us, the problem now becomes before us, where we're both looking at the same problem that topic for the research. Okay, so when you get in in front of them, you wanna establish that, is it really a problem? Sure, when you sit down and talk, there's gonna be a little bit of ice breaking um, and just talking about them for the premise of it. But then when you're getting into the meat of it, essentially you're saying, hey, I've, I think this is a problem. Do you think it's a problem? Has it been a problem in your organization? This is a key technique. What you wanna be doing is you wanna be connecting the person you're interviewing to the problems that are there, the pain of it. This is actually a, a technique that I teach teams for how to get to high performance. You actually, when you're pitching an idea, you want people to feel like it's a problem before you pitch a solution, okay? Because it takes them through the forming, storming, norming curve that you've probably heard about across your career. That language comes from a psychologist. His name is Bruce Tuckman, and it talks about just normal human dynamics. So you actually wanna get them into forming and storming by talking about the problem first. Then um, talk about what have you tried and what's not worked. Again, you're kind of going into the problem space. What have they tried? What hasn't been working for them? Have some discussion about that. Go next to what have you tried that has worked? Now, they may not be able to tell you all the details because it might be proprietary, but you can kind of hint around on some of these things. And uh, you can even start to inject, have you thought of or tried X from your own experience? Now, this is a judgment call where you start to inject that into the conversation overall of you're bringing some of your own experience to the table. And now, really what you're doing is you're turning the whole exchange into a conversation. You're taking that problem from between us to a problem that's before us so that you've got a shared perspective. Really, what you're doing in flipping the script like this is you're getting them on your side. They're starting to see you as somebody who could contribute to your team, their team. Now, as you go through interviews like this, you might encounter a situation where somebody says, hey, you might be a fit for this need that we've just identified, but we haven't identified a candidate for. Wow. Now, be really cautious here. And this is gonna be another judgment call. I actually want you to know about a technique that comes out of sales that's called a takeaway. So when you start to hear things like that, you wanna be caution about that sort of an offer. And instead, you wanna do what's known as a takeaway in sales. Oh, thank you, I'm so honored that you're thinking of me for that. I really wanna respect what I set this interview up for and focus on this. I'd love to talk with you about that later. What you're doing is instead of you pursuing them, hi, could you please give me a job? You're starting to get them to pursue you. Okay, now this is a judgment call. You've got to balance it. It might be so juicy and you just want to jump in and talk about it there. Now, if it does come up, make a mental note that you're going to spend some time. You're going to like cut your interview, your research a little bit short so that you've got some time to talk about with that with them. Okay. Now, as you go a little bit further, um, at the close of the conversation, no matter how it closes, here's another sales technique that you want to inject. It, it's called endless referrals. 
So this is the beautiful thing about this research project is you can start to generate an engine that will help get you in front of people who might have needs for your services. Okay, so in endless referrals as a technique, you're always asking the people you're talking to for additional referrals. Kind of the same way back in the networking talk that you started to ask people, hey, who would you know who might be interested in something like that? Okay. So with as you end these talks, some of the things you want to budget time for are asking them, who else do you know and respect that you think I should talk with about this situation? Now that and respect is really important because it keys in their mind um, some of the key people that might have some insight on this and they might be able to make a connection with, for you with them. So you're extending your network through something like this, maybe at a powerful new level. Um, when they give you some ideas is you should ask, how do you know them? Get an idea of what their background is, what their shared background is. And uh, could uh, you share their contact information? You can ask for that outright. Sometimes they may say, let me make an introduction right now. Now, remember the clue that I gave you in networking. If they offer to make an introduction, something to consider is offer to ghostwrite that introduction for them to make it really easy for them to make an introduction for you. Okay, And always um, ask for permission to use their name. Now, they may say no. And that's okay. So when you're setting up for a research interview and you're edifying them, like when you make that first contact, I've identified you as a thought leader in this field. Oh, how'd you do that? Well, I was referred by somebody else that I'm doing some research. Oh, who was that? Um, I'm not at liberty to say. Now, this is where you can get a little cagey. And they might go, well, why not? You can say, you'd have to ask them about that. And what you're doing is you're showing that you're going to respect confidences no matter what comes up in these conversations. So as you close that conversation, always ask for new referrals. Okay, so who else do you think I should talk with? How do you know them? Do you have their contact information? Could I use your name when I reach out to them? So you want to make it clear you're not going to depend on them for the introduction. You're willing to go straight in using the same sort of a technique. Okay, now um, as you wind up in person, always thank them. And as well, a day or two later, thank them with a follow-up note. You might share some reflections that you've had from your conversation, some articles of interest that you've come across, because you might have talked about some of those in your live conversation. You can even ask them, could I follow up with you and say 60 to 90 days to share with you what I've been picking up since then. That Permission to reach out to them again is always a good thing because you want to have some reason to reach out to them. They may think of new people that they could introduce you to. Okay, so that gives you some ideas about how you can come in the back door and become the identified candidate even before the need appears. This is something, even if you're in a current job, you want to continue to do. You want to sit down and talk with people in your own organization about what problems that they're facing and how they're solving them and what have they tried. It's a great way to build your network inside or outside your organization. So with that, I hope you've found some value in these videos. Do please share them, like them, comment on them here in YouTube where I plan to post them or whatever service I do wind up posting them on. Okay. Um, and if you'd like to reach out to me, okay, my contact information, okay, you can get to me with this URL. Um, really, if I can be of service to you or your organization with Agile coaching, uh, with training, with some of these insights, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for your time and attention. Be well. Stay vibrant.